Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. Every year right about uh, now, before deer season, the uh, Game and Fish Department fields a number of phone calls with questions about deer season. My guest this week is Chief Warden Bob Timian. We're going to try to answer some of the more interesting questions that we get. Bob, uh, first off, let's talk about licenses. What licenses do I need to hunt deer in North Dakota? Well, obviously you need what everybody says is their deer license. That's a three-part piece. First you have to get drawn. <laughs> yeah, first you have to get drawn, which uh, as we all know and personally know that in the last few years, that's more difficult than it used to be. But um, when you get drawn in a lottery, you, you receive your, what everybody calls their deer tag in the, me in the mail. That's a three-part tag that has the tag that goes on the animal. It has a license piece that you can stick on the back of your, your paper license if you still have one. Um, and also a carcass tag which remains with the meat. In addition to that, uh, for lottery people, uh, you need the general game and habitat. You need the general game license also. All right, now do you need to take part of your license and stick that on the back of that general game license and sign that like you do? Yeah, the, the there's a portion that you can peel off and it, it's on there and that sticks on the paper copy. All right. What if I do get drawn, I get lucky in the lottery, but uh, boy, I tucked my license away somewhere and I can't find it. So the first thing to do right now is find your license, locate it. And in most cases, you'll find it. But for those that, for whatever reason, lose their license, it is possible to get a duplicate license, which you will have to pay for. Um, contact your local game and fish office or local game warden, um, but don't wait until Friday morning to do so or Friday afternoon <laughs> after the season because we may not be able to get to you right away and you may have to sit out a while. But uh, the first thing is look now, don't wait till Friday. One question we hear a lot about in the office here, Bob, is legal shooting hours for deer hunting. Okay, um, legal shooting hour deer on opening Friday, it's noon Bismarck time mm -hmm. is the opening bell. After that, it's one half hour before sunrise to one half hour after sunset. And that slides a little bit because the, of course, sunrise is in the east, sets in the west, so there's a... Yes, it's, uh, I believe, one minute for every 12 and a half miles from where the time is set, which is Bismarck. And there's a, it, right in the deer proclamation, Bob, there's a, a sunrise and sunset. Uh, yes, and in, in, our, in the, in the uh, big game hunting guide, the deer guide, um, we print the sunrise and sunset times. It's one half hour before, one half hour after. Probably the most asked question we receive every year, Bob, is about driving or actually hunting on section lines. The section lines in North Dakota by state law are open to travel, ingress and egress. It doesn't necessarily mean you can hunt there, but they are open to travel unless they're officially closed through a legal process. Um, most section lines are not closed, they're open. So people can travel on them. However, if the, the, the section line still belongs to the person who owns the adjacent property, and if they are posted no hunting, you have to have permission to hunt on that side of the section line. But you could still travel on But them. the travel is, it is still open to travel. All right. Can I drive off trail, Bob, to retrieve uh, downed game on public or private land? State law allows you to drive off trail to retrieve big game without, without being in violation of the off off-established trail law. However, the person who controls the property, the property owner or the person who, like in the out west, the Forest Service which manages uh, the national grasslands, can tell you that you can't, what you can do on their property. So if a private landowner says, I don't want you driving on my property, he can say that. And the Forest Service has their own rules on retrieval of game on national grassland. So you, if you're hunting out there, you should check with the Forest Service because they have some rules on where you can drive and where you can't drive and when you can and can't. So yes, you can, but you still, the landowner can say no. 
This brings up another good question, Bob, and what constitutes a trail? It might mean one thing to one person, something else for another. If you get a, a well-worn two-track in there, that's obviously a trail, but what if there's one set of tracks that have been through there that might not be a trail? How do you tell a difference? That's always a question. Um, in general, we look at, for, first of all, um, by law, it's absolutely not a, an established trail if the trail was made for temporary agricultural purposes. Like you go, when the farmer is harvesting his crop, he may access the field, drive across the field several times to as uh, the process of harvesting his crop. That does not constitute an established trail. Um, a what, combine track. Yeah, a combine track or where he took the truck in and out of the field. That's, okay. that's a temporary agricultural process and that's not considered a trail. Now, um, what is a trail? Generally, we tell hunters, use, use some common sense and discretion. I mean, if you drive up and you see a, a field of grass and it looks like maybe somebody drove through there once, they probably were illegal <laughs> and that doesn't make it legal for you to drive through. So, I mean, most hunters and most people in general, if you use common sense and you drive up and you see a trail that's obviously been there for some time, even if it's not what we would call, you know, like a graveled road or something, you, you can tell. If you're in doubt, don't. If I uh, wound an animal on land that I have a legal right to hunt, it jumps the fence, gets onto adjacent property, what are the rules on retrieving wounded game from posted land? <clears throat> State law allows hunters who, if they shot an animal where they had a legal right to hunt, and it does what you said, it crosses into another piece of property and, and dies, they have a right by state law to retrieve that game. It doesn't mean they can continue hunting. It means only that they can go in and retrieve the game. And the purpose of that is so that game isn't lost and wasted. Now, what we do, we do encourage hunters is if, Tom, you, you shot a deer and it hopped the fence and died across the fence and the land was posted, what we would encourage you to do is try to find the person who posted the property and advise them that you know, that you were legally hunting an adjacent property and that your deer appears to have gone over and died in their place and you're, you, you're going to retrieve it. And most of the time, landowners will be fairly reasonable and probably, you know, be okay with it. What if, if the, they're not? If the landowner <laughs> is adamant that you do not go in his property to retrieve your game, um, the course would be don't, conf don't confront the landowner get a hold of the local game warden. All our game wardens carry, uh, have cell phones and we publish their numbers. Get a hold of the local game warden and he can see if he can uh, resolve this situation. All right. Can I use a bow to fill a gun deer tag or vice versa? During the gun season, you can use e any legal weapon to fill your gun tag, i.e. if you, have a, you want to fill it with a bow, you can certainly do that. The bow season, you can only, if you're filling your bow tag, you can only use legal archery equipment to do so. You cannot use guns. One final question, Bob, and we talked about this a little bit earlier. What's the proper way to tag a harvested animal, both does and, uh, and antlered? As we talked about earlier, when you get your deer license, a portion of that is a tag. Um, that has a sticky back that comes off for, for your deer. Um, first of all, when you get the deer down, that's the first thing you should do is tag the deer. You take that sticky tag, notch out the date of the kill, it'll have the month and the day, yep. cut those out. Then if it's a antlered deer, uh, remove the sticky back and, and place the tag around the base of the antler. If it's an antlerless, uh, cut, a hole, cut a slit in one of the ears, um, and pass the tag through the slit and then make sure it's, the backs are stuck together and, and adhere the tag that way. All right, thanks Bob. Sure.
If you're looking for a place to drop off your deer head for the CWD monitoring effort, you can find a complete list on the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. The 2016 North Dakota Firearms Deer Season opens at noon on November 4th and lasts until Sunday, November 20th. The muzzleloader season for deer opens the following Friday, November 25th, and ends on Sunday, December 11th. For Chief Warden Bob Timian and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. Have a safe season. We'll see you again next week.